everybody and welcome to m Reviews. Today we're doing another Hong Kong review back in the front room after a couple of experimental videos with quick reviews and talking about a couple of movies that I really liked with A Bit of Sweet Life and to get out some of the Eureka editions and of course Black Magic which is a film that I just did not get along with in the slightest. But I'm going to change that up a little bit. We're today talking about a film that I think is a Hong Kong cinema classic a masterpiece as you will, an absolute pure surprise, a film I had no expectations for and just like Fearless Aina, just like uh, Shalom Wonderman, The Killer, Constable is an absolute fantastic movie. I'm going to talk to you why on this review. <laughs> The Killer Constable was released in 1980, directed by Kenji Hong, which is a director that I don't know much about. I haven't followed any of his films, but according to IMDb and looking at his kind of filmography, he's mainly kind of done films in the kind of horror or kind of horror comedy expectation type movies uh, from that kind of decade or kind of Hong Kong Shaw Brothers cinema, which is the exact genre that I'm trying to avoid, which I think is quite coincidental that I've watched a couple of movies from that. And yet this director has come out of the gate work with something like this, which you wouldn't necessarily think he would be from a director like him, being the fact a lot of his movies are kind of like killer snakes or kind of like very heavy supernatural witchcraft type movies. He's done Hex, he's done The Omen uh, Boxer, he's done Bewitched. A lot of his movies are very high regarded and very kind of highly talked about movies kind of thing within the kind of uh, 88 films Asian cinema collection. Most of his films have got nice premium editions. So he's definitely a director that is well established, well known. He's definitely got his foot into kind of like the, the fun kind of B-movie horror genre. And I don't think he's done many of these kind of traditional martial arts short boys type movies. I could be mistaken on that. You would think with the high quality of this movie, he would be established kind of seasonal, kind of, you know, John Woo or Troy Hawk type of director, someone who has been doing these types of film for years and years and years and perfected his craft because this level of quality for a director that has not really done many of these types of movies and mainly known for kind of horror kind of B-movies is extraordinary and that just kind of proves to show that anyone can make a really fucking great film if they have set their mind to it and clearly he wanted to make this film clearly he had a vision clearly he had a style and he knew what he wanted to put on screen you know i love it when this happens you know you watch a film you have no expectations most of the kind of hong kong cinema movies i do watch i try to avoid trailers i try to avoid spoilers i just kind of go in blind even though these are like 40 year old movies 30 year old movies i try to go in with low expectations possible and try and see what the film is offering me sunsets are beautiful newborn babies are beautiful this this is fucking spectacular and the killer constable one know is an out of print uh, blu-ray edition i know it's very high regarded most of the shaw brothers kind of collection is well high regarded the killer constable while going into too many spoils basically follows the forbidden kingdom has been robbed a uh, very high empress um, an emperor kind of thing has been robbed completely uh, been storing a lot of that money kind of on a secure site uh, like i think like twenty thousand or ten thousand kind of yen gold plates a lot of money's been taken and the killer constable has been tasked by the government by his kind of you know superiors as uh, going to track these kind of robbers down and he's a very high-ranking police officer very ruthless by the book someone who has got a reputation for killing most of his targets and he's got 10 days to basically find these robbers and bring back that money and he's been also tasked to put a little task force together a kind of suicide squad if as you will of people uh, to basically go alongside on that mission with him. One of the things I love straight off the bat is that this is a 98 minute film and it does not waste its time. It has some of the best pacing and best kind of series of kind of escalation or kind of involvement or change up in the story. That is absolutely incredible and so engaging for a viewer to really get into. The first kind of 20 minutes I would say is crucial to the whole point of the entire film. It's crucial to the characters, crucial to the whole journey and how everything plays off from that point onwards. Uh, the start of the film you kind of have have two sequences with the killer constable. Uh, one sequence is him, you know, tracking down some bandits. Uh, it's a very open kind of short brothers kind of location, the Sun Deserts kind of thing. And he kind of goes in like that Batman and takes all of them out. He's ruthless, he's got like his kind of sword and he's got his kind of martial arts tactics kind of thing. And he takes all of them out and he chases after someone on horseback. Really incredible kind of introduction type of sequence, but a very crucial sequence also to establish his character, establish he is not messing around. If he goes in there to fight someone he is going there to kill practically and that's a very kind of 
crucial moment in the film. Uh, some of his kind of comrades get killed in the process. So he shows how good a skill set he is, but also how easy someone else can kind of die during the process. The second sequence we get during the start of the film, he's tracking down this kind of family. Uh, they're kind of holding up this kind of windmill kind of thing, uh, shack, and he goes in there with a little, little team, and basically he's asking, where's the money, where's the money kind of thing. You know, give me the money, I won't hurt your kids, I won't hurt you, and I'll go be on my way. But obviously it pushes him to a limit. He does get the money, but he ends up killing the husband in the process so it shows that he is reasonable but also he is willing to do what he needs to do for the kind of the, the task the mission that he's been set upon and surprisingly for a character that has got a reputation for killing first for a character that is very ruthless by nature he is quite understanding he is very much willing to listen to feedback he's willing to uh, understand his kind of actions. There's a really great sequence during kind of the start of the film with the temple where he's been given the task. His kind of best friend is telling him like, you know, you've got a reputation, you need to stop killing people, you need to give people chance, you need to stop and think, you know, look around you, look at your surroundings, look at the bigger picture. Don't go in blind, don't go in head first. You know, think about what the situation is and how to go about it. Really surprising that early on in the film. You wouldn't expect it from a character like this and he is someone who does care about his friends. There's a really good scene when he has a kind of a heart to heart and kind of like a consciousness for a character basically wants his juice, someone who's a little bit older, someone who's been doing the kind of same duties over and over. He's got his, finally got his task, he finally got his time to go on a mission with the killer constable, to go and take out some bad guys, air quote kind of thing. He's on retirement age, he's had his days, he's had his time, he's put his effort in. I don't want you killed in this battle because very likely this is going to be a suicide mission. It's your risk, it's your take. I'll bring you along, but you know, know the consequences, know the action. And I think that's a really good, you know, series of kind of sequences during early on in the film with kind of like the, the all out action sequence of the bandits, with his kind of, you know, uh, negotiation with the kind of small family, and all the scenes with the temple and him assembling his team. All this is in the first kind of like 20, 25 minutes of the film because you really get to know all the characters really well, the whole little, little team. You get to know the killer constable, his ethics, his kind of willingness to kind of listen, his compassion, his ruthlessness, his skill sets. You all establish all this great stuff very early. On. And as the storyline goes along, it goes to some really fantastic reveals and twists and turns that I generally wasn't expecting. And the fact it has so much variety within its kind of, not only its kind of storylines within its kind of character journey, but also within its action. You know, the fact you're going from kind of a shadow kind of assassination type sequence to an all out massive field, you know, escalation kind of booby trapped with fire and kind of horseback. And you kind of get this kind of dual next like beach kind of thing, you know, with a fantastic backdrop and during the rocky kind of mountains. Um, characters are dying in different unique kind of ways through poison, through fire, through stabbings, uh, through kind of, you know, horrible causes, getting knocked off cliffs kind of thing. There's some really nasty kind of surprising escalation of, of the scenes that I didn't expect to see coming from a, I thought initially from a slightly cheaper movie. There's a really amazing section of the film where he basically is kind of taking on one-to-one -one with this kind of very famous kind of hitman, someone from the East, someone who's very kind of well-known, very kind of has a high reputation for kind of always killing his targets. The killer constable is also has deep respect for him. He's got a high skill set himself. He thinks he can take on this guy, but he doesn't want to because he's a good chance this guy could kill him or vice versa in that sense. So he tries to play it cool. You know, I'm on a mission. I don't want to fight you. I have no interest in you. I don't know why you're here. I'm on a mission to basically find these robbers and to kind of see justice and that kind of stuff. Tries to bribe him with gold. And even he's like, you know, laughing and he's kind of overconfident, as you will. And he's like, you know, don't do this practically kind of thing. And, you know, it goes into a fantastic sequence not too long after where they're really going at each other. They're really fighting back and forth. And he's going to kind of go like a series of, kind of tools with kind of, you know, swords and kind of poison darts kind of thing and, you know, trickery kind of thing. And yeah, this is a fantastic sequence, which I absolutely loved. And I was laughing so much in a good way where he has these double bladed knives in the side of his kind of, you know, uh, legs is almost like a western in that sense. It's almost like he's you know he whips them out like a western gun and flips out these kind of double-edged swords, and it's absolutely fucking hilarious and fucking brilliant. So badass, and the fact he's kind of pulling out left and right like star weapons kind of thing, and he's really going for this kind of all-out fight sequence. And the, the the match between mono and mono is absolutely incredible. 
very intense sequence, very high stakes, uh, an unintentionally hilarious but also brilliant kind of western inspired kind of guns with knives kind of sequence kind of thing that I absolutely love and I think it's a really badass sequence in the film but also has a lot of weight to what's going on in the film. The fact that this kind of level of Hitman is going after him, very expensive on that, is being paid to kind of take him out on these kind of tasks, these little group of people, is really interesting for the story as well. And there's never a dull moment in the film, and I've noticed that very early on. You get all the setup and during the first 25 minutes, you get serious kind of escalation and kind of character-driven moments or kind of surprising moments, all out scale, massive field, kind of, you know, with fire and kind of, you know, this the sea and kind of dual battles on the rock. Uh, you get a sequence like this, where he's kind of on the, on the trail kind of thing with a kind of badass hitman assassin incredible sequence and then you get the heart of the film a little bit with kind of him catching up with the robbers uh you find out a bit more what, what his motivation is with his daughter which is also blind and you get a, a really kind of series of kind of tone changes and kind of different kind of uh set locations a really high production value with the kind of the rain and the mud and the kind of the, the, the fog and the mist uh, just it constantly changes as the film goes along with the kind of the practical nature of the film is I love me some emotional impact during the film if you can get me invested in your character if you can get me invested on in your journey and get me kind of shocked and kind of feeling what they're feeling during the scenes with you know character deaths or kind of all out kind of who are kind of thing you know sacrifice for the for the main character I'm with there alongside riveting kind of like story reveals and kind of twists and turns because the film does go on this kind of massive kind of reveal towards the third act of the film. You can definitely tell Quentin Tarantino has watched this movie and taken some inspiration for his style of filming, for his style of storytelling. And one of the little details about the film that I really loved is the kind of the backdrop, the kind of what's going on behind the scenes a little bit. Because a lot of these locations, a lot of these kind of like little town villages, a uh, little bar sequence towards the end as well, the, the people are responsible for the actual robbering the, uh, the Forbidden Kingdom. There's this kind of like social class kind of, you know, poverty going on in the background. You've got the rich still remaining rich that want to get richer kind of thing. You've got jealous kind of emperors and empresses kind of thing. You've got, you've got pawns, middleman and the people. Uh, you've All the robbers, all the thieves, all the hitmans, all the kind of characters that are going after him are kind of being paid or kind of, you know, they're doing it for the money. There's a constant theme of wealth versus poverty. It's constantly throughout the film. The bar sequence especially, it's very kind of cold. It's kind of got this kind of dusty kind of wind, kind of orange kind of tint kind of background going on. The barkeeper isn't making much money. There's no visitors kind of thing. You know, he's not, he's making roughly to make ends meet. The thieves, the robbers, they're doing it for their families. You know, you've kind of got this woman that kind of is a pawn in the, in the, during the kind of second and third act of the film where she's blind. The robber is doing it for her, trying to make sure she's looked after because after he's gone, no one else can look after her. So he needs to have money to look after her and to kind of provide the kind of the food and the kind of warmth for her. A lot of the motivation throughout the entire film, even the kind of like the family during the start of the film, uh, you know, having some money kind of stolen in that sense, you know, they're doing it for the family. There's this constant theme of family poverty and just doing it for noble causes. There's no kind of rich gain kind of, you know, uh, feverty. And the people that aren't doing it for the right reasons are the bandits, are the kind of the hitmans or the kind of assassins or the kind of, you know, high ranking officers. Like, you know, another detail, another reason why I think this film is so rich and so incredible. And a film that packs so much in, it's 90, 80 minute window is really a testament to how good the film is. If that, even the smallest scenes, even the downtime moments, reveal something about the story about this world. To see how this character has gone from a very loyal servant to the government, to, you know, the has a massive reputation, to seeing everything that's played out for the film these 10 days with the comrades being killed and, you know, things are not adding up, you know, why are so many people after him? Why are there so many close calls? You know, who are these people that have stole the money kind of thing? Who is the real bad guys in this film? You know, what is going on? What is happening? And you're fully with that journey. You're fully with that character. And it's absolutely fantastic. 
Overall, The Killer Constable is an absolute Hong Kong cinema classic masterpiece, excellent production value with a set of locations as the film goes along, visually striking. I love this the variety of action sequences from the small scale kind of, you know, bandit sequence to the all out scale massive field of fire. I love the rain sequence. I love how you, know, you got hidden ninjas, you got assassins, you got hitman. I love the fact it's an inspiration from Quentin Tarantino style storytelling. It has different sections of you know, escalation points going on, starting from a traditional Shaw Brothers film, going to an epic to go into a more of a traditional revenge movie by the end. Really incredible journey, a really a thrill ride of kick-ass 80s kind of, you know, Hong Kong cinema, exactly what you want to see from these type of movies. Large and live characters, characters you can get behind, uh, character deaths that you can get feel, feel emotionally connected to, well performed, well executed, and just delivers on what it sets out to do. Blu-ray edition for Killer Constable, unfortunately, is out of print at the moment, so if you can find this for a very cheap price, go and find it, go and find the DVD, go and find the Blu-ray. Hopefully down the line, they might re-release these editions, maybe like a kind of 88 Asian collection box set or something, that'd be really awesome. Being the fact they're doing the Shaw Brothers box set soon, who knows, might, might happen, but Killer Constable is a really great edition, uh, apart from uh, kind of the lack of extras. Uh, there is very little extra to play audio commentary. Uh, there's no booklet, as far as I can tell. I don't know if it's out of print or not, but uh, yeah, this is the edition here. And you also get uh, alternative artwork on the edition, which I think the original artwork is actually really badass, really cool, I really like it a lot. Uh, so yeah, The Killer Constable on Blu-ray, definitely worth seeking out, definitely worth finding. Uh, you can probably find this on CX in the UK for about £10. I got this for about 8 um, just look around, see what you can find. But yeah, Killer Constable, it's a must own on Blu ray. So, until next time, guys, I'll be doing the Eureka kind of lineup movies with Wild Search and Millions Express. Those two videos will be coming out in the next couple of weeks when I watch those films. So, please stay tuned for them. So, in the meantime, guys, I'm through reviews. Signing out.